What is still one of the most beautiful dream islands in the Mediterranean for tourists is a fascinating mystery for archaeologists. Sardinia is adorned with countless relics from the Nuragic culture, which are still shrouded in mystery today. Although thousands of their painstakingly constructed buildings, megalithic tombs, and carefully crafted works of art have now been explored, the greatest mysteries remain unsolved. But what fate befell this Bronze Age people, and what connected them to other civilizations of their time? Well, to approach these questions, we must first turn our attention to the mysterious structures that gave the Nuragic culture its name in the first place. Many historical mysteries come in thousands of variations, although experts on the Italian island of Sardinia have counted around 7,000 Nuragi. The question of their original purpose still awaits a clear answer. Some researchers estimate that the Bronze Age builders erected a total of 10,000 of these unique structures. But what are Nuragi anyway? Well, basically we are dealing with prehistoric tower structures ancient round towers made of boulders weighing tons and some of them towering over 20 meters high. Nuragi are also characterized by their meter-thick stone walls, their circular taper, and their niches and corner towers. Some structures also have wells, ground-level silos, and other rooms that were probably used to store food. All in all, researchers believe that the first of these stone giants were built around 3,500 years ago and that they underwent constant change in the following period. This included Proto, Corridor, and Tholos Naraji, which eventually led to full-fledged complex Naraji villages. However, construction of the towers seems to have largely ceased around 1200 BC. Nevertheless, the buildings continued to be used for centuries. And there is no question that the creation of these unusual colossi required a high degree of knowledge and skill. Just take a look at the Nuragi Sunaraxi. The Bronze Age craftsmen somehow managed to stack numerous stone blocks weighing several tons to form a perfectly rounded tower, four corner towers, and a ring wall. And that without using any mortar. But how did they do it? And why did they devote themselves to such exhausting work in the first place? Well, as already mentioned, this is precisely the central question. We simply do not know what motivated the people of that time to build the Naraji. Stone tools, cooking pots, and fire pits have been found in some of the towers, which suggests that the structures were primarily used as dwellings. At the same time, however, the interconnectedness of the Naraji also suggests that they probably functioned as fortifications. In many places, several such towers were built in close proximity to each other and they had a shared well and an inner courtyard and were usually surrounded by megalithic walls. However, the residential and defensive theories are by no means the only explanations proposed. An alternative view is based on the idea that the round towers had a social and religious significance. For example, as a place for gatherings, rites of passage and initiation, or certain festivals. Other researchers, on the other hand, consider it conceivable that at least some Naraji were used as solar or star calendars. But how is it that we can only speculate about the true purpose of these structures today? Well, there are essentially two reasons for this. On the one hand, some Naraji are now nothing more than ruins. They were destroyed over time so that their stone blocks could be reused elsewhere. On the other hand, and more importantly, the creators of the Naraji were simply children of their time. In other words, the Sardinians of the Bronze Age did not know yet how to write, which is why they were unable to leave any records for posterity that could shed more light on this historical mystery. The Mysterious Cult of Giants It should now be clear to all of us that former inhabitants of Sardinia had a certain penchant for architectural megalomania. However, this was by no means limited to the tower structures that gave them their name. It also extended to their graves. If you like, the members of the Bonnaroo culture, the direct predecessors of the Nuragic culture, wanted to pay their deceased a literally grand final tribute. However, the megalithic tombs, commonly known as giant's tombs, served as the final resting place not only for individuals, but for dozens of people. In one tomb, 136 skeletons were even discovered, and with their portal stelles up to 4 meters high and galleries, some of which are over 20 meters long, 
the giant's tombs still fill us with awe and wonder today. At the same time, however, the design of the imposing burial sites also suggests that the relatives wanted to be as close as possible to their dead. According to the beliefs of the time, the deceased were transformed into gods or similar heroic figures after their death, and the giants did their part to protect the eternal rest of these supernatural creatures. But what does this mean? Well, the farmers must have asked themselves the same question when they unearthed a gigantic stone head while working in the fields in the spring of 1974. Discovered in Monte Prama on the west coast of Sardinia, the artifact was only the first of thousands of similar finds that archaeologists would uncover in the following years. Gradually, the fragments were assembled into colossal statues and initially misinterpreted. In fact, researchers initially assumed that these were relics of the Carthaginians, but after some closer examination, it became clear that the stone fragments had clear characteristics of the much older Nuragic culture. All in all, the stone giants are thought to have been created between the 10th and 8th centuries BC, towards the end of the Nuragic period. These stone giants can be divided into three main categories, boxers, archers, and warriors. The boxers, who make up the majority of the sculptures found so far, wore a shield and a ritual fighting glove, and historians suspect that these martial artists held a religious or even priestly position. The archers, on the other hand, were depicted with their right arm raised in greeting, while their left hand held a bow resting on their shoulder. The few warriors that have been unearthed so far are unfortunately in poor condition. Their helmets are adorned with a central crest and two horns, and they were probably originally equipped with round shields. But what was the significance of these silent witnesses to history? Well, they appear to be connected to the Norigic Necropolis, which was also discovered in Monte Prama in the 1970s. Against this backdrop, some experts believe that the figures were intended to represent the military and priestly elite who may have been buried in the necropolis. Another hypothesis suggests that the statues were meant to represent heroic figures from the past perhaps those who built the massive structures. According to this theory, the heroic ancestors would have served as reminders of the traditional values and shared heritage that held the island community together. Spiritual Rituals and the Demise of an Island People However, it can be assumed that the rites of ancestor worship were not only held at funerals, but also at regular intervals. The spiritual practices seem to have been most closely associated with the dead, the afterlife, and water rituals. For example, archaeologists have already identified special sacrificial benches, stairs leading to sacred springs, and enclosures around sacred wells. It is possible that the members of the Nuragic culture attributed magical properties to water. After all, Nuragic sanctuaries were always built in the immediate vicinity of cool water. Particularly exciting is the theory that neighboring, or even hostile tribes, also took part in the spiritual gatherings held at the largest sacred springs. In addition, numerous bronze figures have been found in these areas which, to our knowledge, served as votive offerings. These symbolic sacrifices were placed in sanctuaries to win the favor of the gods. However, some supernatural beings have also crept into the depictions of warriors, competitors, everyday objects, and animals which are anything but easy to interpret. But even from a purely historical point of view, the bronze figures of the Nurgic culture appear extremely unusual, because we do not know how the art of bronze casting found its way to Sardinia. What we do know, however, is that there are indications that the inhabitants of Sardinia also had contact with other parts of the world. This is particularly true of mentions made by the Romans, but artifact finds also show that the Nuragic culture had trade relations with Greece and Cyprus. But what is actually known about the downfall of this people? Well, after the Phoenicians gained control of the Mediterranean region, they began to establish settlements in Sardinia in the 9th century BC. And while this was probably done with the consent of the local population at first, the situation continued to escalate when the Phoenician successors, the Carthaginians, pressed for complete colonization of the island in the 6th century BC. The Nuraga emerged victorious from several battles, but
But in the end, the Carthaginians succeeded in bringing the areas of Sardinia that were of interest to them under their control. As a result, an ethnic and cultural fusion took place among the population, and more and more people turned away from the cultural and religious practices of the Nuraga. And in the end, the ancient culture that had once created the unique bronze figures, round towers, and stone giants disappeared completely. You will now find the like and subscribe buttons below our video. Join our community now and never miss another exciting post from us.